Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an overview, some benchmarks, as well as some ogling at this brand new SSD from Samsung. This is the Samsung 840 Evo. Uh, it is available in a variety of capacities. You get 120 gig, the 250 gig that I have right here, also available in 500 gig, 750 gig, as well as one terabyte. Start off with a look at the retail box. Uh, this one does feature a new design for the SSD itself if you're comparing it to the uh, 840 or the 840 Pro. Uh, this one features, the, the biggest difference here is going to be the use of Samsung's TLC or triple level cell NAND flash memory which is inside and I'll give you a closer look at that. Uh, but here on the box you can see this is a SATA 6 gigabits per second uh, or SATA Revision 3 compatible drive. It's also backwards compatible with 3 gigabits per second. However, you will be limiting the SSD performance. So I definitely recommend going with a SATA Rev 3 connection if you are going to be installing this drive. Faster evolutionary performance, uh, Samsung data migration software is also included for easy and simple upgrades. The Samsung Magician software is also included. I've had a chance to take a quick look at that. I can uh, say it's, it's quite uh, full featured and easy to use. You get a three year warranty for this drive uh, from Samsung and uh, this is a 2.5 inch uh, SSD. It's seven millimeters thick so it should fit in uh, 2.5 inch slimmer SSD uh, applications such as uh, some of the laptops out there that take slimmer SSDs. And uh, let me go ahead and pop it open to show you what all is included. I will be forthright and tell you guys I have already taken this SSD out and taken it for a spin so I, I can already tell you that it's uh, quite a good performer. You get an installation guide here so if you've never installed an SSD particularly in a notebook or something like that uh, they're kind of walking you through the data migration software nice big pictures uh, to, to show you how to do everything to back up your data get the SSD installed especially if you're going to be copying over from another drive you get some Samsung case badges so you can advertise to your friends on your laptop or your uh, desktop that you got this SSD inside. Uh, here's your warranty statement again for that three-year warranty. And here is your Samsung SSD. Uh, this is going to include the migration software as well as the Samsung Magician software. Uh, so you can install it off of this. You can also download directly from the Samsung website if that is your preference. And now the uh, SSD itself. So again, you'll notice a different color here at least. Uh, the 840 and the 840 Pro were primarily black with an orange highlight. This one's pretty much kind of like a gunmetal gray with black, so uh, pretty, pretty sedate from the color palette, but it should blend in uh, nicely if you are going to go for, say, a, a case with a side window and you want to display your SSD prominently. Here in the back you can see uh, some of the uh, drive information. Again, this is the 250 gig model. It's available in all those other capacities I already mentioned, up to one terabyte. Uh, one thing to note here, this drive does feature AES 256-bit encryption. Uh, however, if you do use that encryption method, if you are going to be protecting your data and you do want to recover the drive if you happen to forget uh, your password, you can use the PSID, which is printed right on there, to uh, reset the drive. However, bear in mind, if you do that, you will lose all the data on the drive. So. Uh, if you're going to set up uh, AES-256 encryption, you will get data security, but make sure you write down your password. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a disassembly of this drive. Please bear in mind that you should not do this at home unless you're okay with voiding your warranty because this will void your warranty, and I did have to actually put a couple holes in the label in the back there to get at the screws. Now, I've heard that this was a Torx T5 screws, uh, which is this little six-pointed little six Torx screw, but it uh, actually looks more like pentalobe to me, which is the five-pointed ones. I'm going to try out my pentalobe screwdriver. Man, those are really in there. Okay. Pentalobe seems to be working. So you might need a bit of a specialty screwdriver, too, if you do want to do this. But again, I, I recommend just, just watch this video right now and, and don't bother taking yours apart because really not much is going to come of it. There's plenty of pictures online that you can get. Okay. Now here's a look at the inside of the drive housing, of course. It's actually pretty empty. So um, here you can see how the uh, SSDs themselves are actually getting smaller and smaller. Uh, so the PCB on this one is very small. Uh, this is the same PCB that's used for the 120 uh, gig as well as the 250 gig version. There's a slightly longer version of this PCB that's used uh, for the higher capacity versions, the 500, 750 and one terabyte versions. But here we can see uh, a fair amount of the uh, componentry on the uh, drive itself. Of course, we can see your standard SATA connectors right there at the back, which is uh, serial ATA data on the left, and uh, your power connector there on the right. And then we can see some of the NAND packages. Here's one of them on this side. And then flipping over to this side, uh, we also have another NAND package right here. Uh, we have a bit of DDR cache. Uh, that's actually uh, a DRAM cache, low power DDR2 1066. 
uh, you get 120. I'm sorry, you get 256 megabytes on the 120 gig version. Uh, on this version, the 250 and the 500 gig version, you get 512 megabytes. And then on the 750 or one terabyte version, you get one gigabyte of cache. So that's right there in the middle. There's your other NAND package uh, right there. So two of them on this one uh, that gives you 128 binary gigabytes uh, per package for 250 total. And then you can see the controller, which is there on the right side as well. There is actually no uh, heat uh, spreader or uh, thermal pad um, on the case between the controllers. So that my assumption there would be that Samsung has managed to get this controller to operate at a pretty nominal temperatures. Uh, apart from that, the controller itself, I should say, is the Samsung MEX, and that's the successor to the Samsung MDX controller that was used, used in the 840 Pro. It's a triple core Cortex R4. Uh, and it runs at 400 megahertz, and that's as compared to the 840 Pro's MEX, which ran at 300 megahertz. Uh, it's also SATA 3.1 compatible, um, which offers some new functionality and uh, some additional efficiency, but one of the uh, best things as far as an SSD goes is it does allow for uh, queued trim commands. And uh, if you're not familiar with trim, you could uh, take a look at our SSD video on Newegg TV, and that should hopefully give you a better uh, idea of trim and garbage collection. Uh, apart from that, uh, you also have uh, the NAND packages, and that's uh, also made by Samsung. It's 19 nanometer TLC, or triple level cell memory. So um, a typical NAND package, uh, or typical NAND, uh, is defined as either SLC or single level cell, and that will store one bit, or one zero, or one uh, per cell. Uh, for a while now, we've been seeing MLC, or multi-level cell memory, which uses two bits per cell. Uh, this is TLC, which is still MLC, which is multi-level cell, uh, but this is triple level cell. So you get three bits per cell. And they've actually done sort of a fancy thing with it, uh, with these new NAND packages. It's what's called TurboWrite. And basically, Samsung, or the uh, controller itself, is going to set aside a portion of uh, the NAND, and it's going to use it as a cache. But it's going to operate the TLC, TLC, memory, uh, the TLC NAND packages as SLC. So it's only going to write one bit per cell even though it's TLC memory, uh, it does that. You actually get three gigabytes uh, for the turbo write buffer uh, in the 120 gig and 250 gig models. You get six gigs uh, for the turbo write buffer in the 500 gig model, nine gigs in the 750 gig model, and uh, 12 gigs in the one terabyte model. And that can actually lead to uh, a great increase in performance uh, as long as whatever you're writing stays within that buffer size. Of course, you still get great performance after that, but uh, once that buffer fills up, it will go ahead and start feeding the data directly to the, uh, the TLC memory, so it will slow down a little bit. But that's one way that Samsung has sort of uh, gotten around the uh, limitations of the TLC memory versus uh, MLC or SLC. Next up, we're going to take a look at some benchmarks. So I've jumped over here to the benchmarking area. And uh, first off, for the test bed that I'm running, uh, we got an Intel Core i5-3570K processor running at stock. We're on an Asus Maximus 5G motherboard, so that's a Z77 chipset. We're connected to the native uh, SATA Rev3 controller uh, from the Z77 chipset, which gives excellent performance. Uh, also, we've got uh, some memory plugged in. I think it's AMD memory, actually, running at 2133. Uh, and, of course, the Samsung uh, 840 EVO, which you can see right up there at the top. So let's go ahead and start off with AS SSD. Uh, you can see the results down here on the lower left. These are the... Uh, this is actually the same test, so on the left side you're seeing megabytes per second. On the right side you're seeing input-output operations per second. Overall score for ASSSD was 1,035 for this drive, which is a very impressive score. ASSSD tends to be pretty harsh when it comes to SSD testing. But you can see our sequential reads and writes up there on the top left, uh, 504 megabytes per second and 497 megabytes per second. Uh, you can also see our 64-threaded 4, uh, 4K tests, which is uh, a great representation of input-output operations per second. Uh, which is shown over here on the right side, 92,000 and 54,000 respectively for read and write. And then another thing I like about ASSSD is you can see the uh, access time 0 0.03 and 0 0.02 milliseconds, which is super fast. Uh, ASSSD also has a compression benchmark built in. You're not going to see a huge variance here because uh, this drive does not do on-the-fly compression, so you'll see pretty consistent numbers across the board there, except for a little dip, which I think was just the uh, system uh, doing something else at the same time. Uh, we also have the uh, copy benchmark right here, which does some uh, sort of simulation of uh, typical uh, computer activities, ISO program and game, and you can see the results shown right there. Next up, we have Atto. Uh, this is a very popular benchmark, particularly for the SSD manufacturers to run. You can see all the results right here. I ran it at Q depth 4 and at Q depth 10. 
QDEF 10 is what you'll often see uh, the numbers reflected on the uh, actual box. So uh, here, as you can see, as the transfer size increases, the uh, performance increases, we topped out at about 555 megabytes per second uh, for the reads, which is quite impressive. And uh, we topped out at about 536 megabytes per second, actually 538 over here on the left. QDEF 4 did a little bit faster than QDEF 10 in that particular test. Uh, here we have the disk speed test from Blackmagic Design, and this one's specifically geared towards uh, using this SSD in video production. So we have a bunch of different video formats here, as well as a bunch of different color depths. And this is simply telling you, uh, based on the format and the color depth, if this is an appropriate SSD to run those tests at. For our write test, we hit 424 megabytes per second. For reads, 511 megabytes per second. We can see green check marks. And the vast majority of these tests that was run over here, except for some of the uh, higher frame rate, 12-bit RGB tests. And then we can also see the uh, speed for uh, some of these specific tests right there at the different uh, types of video formats. Uh, next up we have Crystal Disk Mark. This is uh, an old standby. It's an easy test to download and run if you want to test an SSD at home. Here we can see some uh, great performance. You're going to see a similar performance here to what we saw with AS SSD. 526 megabytes per second and 514 megabytes per second for sequential reads and writes. And then our 4K test down here, which is more indica indicative of uh, typical day-to-day -day computer use. We can see that mirrored over here. 4K QDepth 32 and QDepth 1, but at QDepth 32, we hit that mythical 97,000 input-output operations per second, which is pretty huge. Um, and 70, uh, that's for the random reads, 70,000 for random writes. And those are the uh, specs that uh, Samsung is listing on the box. Uh, I also ran this, actually, I should say, that was in uh, incompressible mode. I also ran this in compressible mode because I typically do that. But again, this drive doesn't do on-the-fly compression, so uh, we're not going to see much difference in the numbers. Uh, I've also been uh, dabbling with iometer, and I'm getting a bit more comfortable with it since it's a very popular and ubiquitous uh, drive test utility. Uh, however, it's a little bit more difficult to jump into, but I just ran a quick uh, test here. This is a 4K sequential write QDEP32 test, and we can see input-output operations per second, 88,000 listed right there, and uh, 345 megabytes per second in that particular test. I'll be bringing you more of those tests in the future. Uh, finally, we have the Samsung Magician software, and I'll be showing you a little bit more of this as well. Uh, but we can see that it's got a built-in performance benchmark, so there's the numbers we saw there. This drive is rated for up to 540 megabytes per so second sequential read. We hit 551. It's up to 520 sequential writes. We hit 537. 97,000 random read IOPS. We hit 98,000. And 66,000 random write IOPS, and we hit 79,000. So. Um, Bear in mind, this is Samsung's own utility, so I would expect it to perform well with their drives, uh, but that is some impressive performance nonetheless. Uh, and lastly, since I was talking about that software, I did want to show it. So it's uh, up here on the top right. Um, also, in case you guys are wondering, the 250 gig model when formatted will give you 232 usable gigs of uh, actual storage. And then uh, here's a, a quick look at the utility. So you get a sort of an overall view of the drive, drive health status. Uh, you, can, you can validate your serial number. It will tell you the drive space as well as the use space. Total bytes written to the drive over time. Also some useful information like whether or not you have AH, AHCI uh, enabled or not. What SATA interface you're connected to. Um, <clears throat> and then we also have an OS optimization uh, option over there on the right. You can use that to maximize your performance, your capacity, your reliability. Uh, and then you can also uh, actually go in there and do some more detailed work yourself if you want to. You can click this button to see all the drive's uh, smart logging uh, functions, which are list all listed right there. Uh, there's the performance benchmark that I already showed you guys. Uh, there's a performance optimization, will, which will do some automatic trim functions and garbage collection if you're uh, worried that that might not have been taken care of for a while. You can do a firmware, firmware update as well. Here's the uh, more advanced functions for OS optimization, uh, which I was doing a little bit of dabbling with as well. You can also set up over-provisioning for the drive, uh, which is also a quite handy function. Uh, actually, limiting the drive's formatted capacity is a great way uh, to extend the lifespan of the driver. Not necessarily the lifespan, but extend your uh, peak performance of the drive. You also have a secure erase function built in, which is super handy for an SSD. Secure erase is a great way to make sure that you're resetting the drive to uh, factory defaults and erasing all the data that might be on there or might be uh, messing up your, drive, uh, your drive's performance. And then finally, we have rapid mode. This is real-time accelerated processing of I.O. data, which is one of the fan most fantastic acronyms ever conceived of. Uh, you can see the target drive here. 
What rapid mode is going to do is it's basically going to use some of your CPU and some of your physical RAM to cache for the drive. And this is going to give you e extremely enhanced capability since you're not going to be limited by the SATA bus. So it will cache uh, using your CPU and your RAM up to, uh, up to a certain extent and then it will push that data to the drive when it has uh, time to. Uh, so just another feature of the Samsung Magician software here that uh, is, a, is a great feature and in a lot of the online tests I've read uh, it provides actually a pretty significant performance boost. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Thanks again for joining me for this closer look at the Samsung 840 EVO, as well as a quick look at the Samsung Magician SSD software. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, well, go ahead and hit the like button, which is down there in the corner. Go ahead and subscribe to Newegg TV if you want to see more videos just like this one, and we'll see you next time.